Hey everybody and welcome back. Certainly glad you could join me today. In this video, we're going to do what we need to do with the starting part of creating our items screen. Our item screen is the screen that's going to overlay our background image, which will contain images uh, of items that we can click on essentially. So in order to do that, first thing we need to do is create our images. So what we've got here is a picture of a garden. I've changed it from the one that we originally had. This is one that I've rendered out myself, so I won't have any issues with copyright. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom in to the image like so, just so that we can get a close up of the items. And as you can see, there's a little bit of grain in this, but for the purposes of a demonstration, this is absolutely fine. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to isolate out this couch here to make it a clickable item. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my polygon marquee tool, which is this one here. And it's called the polygon lasso too, sorry, my apologies. And then all we have to do is we have to start by clicking somewhere in there. And then we're just going to click around the outline of the object that we want to turn into a clickable item in the game. So it hasn't got to be perfect. The user isn't going to see this image down to this kind of detail. To them, it's going to be, you know, relatively small inside the frame. So if you're not perfect, it doesn't matter. You could use the quick selection tool if you wanted to, but that in my experience generally leads to uh, very fuzzy lines and we want to give a Rempi a nice clear solid item that we can create with no kind of weird half 50% pixels or anything like that it's not necessarily going to cause any performance issues but I like to see nice hard edges around the objects where possible shadows are the only places where I make an exception to that rule so here we go. Now, if I wanted to, I could go around the outside of this plant and, um, you know, marquee out the leaves if this plant were going to be a selectable item as well. But for the purposes of this demonstration, it is not going to be. So there we go. So we're going to go control zero to zoom out. As you can see, we've got a nice solid selection around our couch. Now, all we're going to do is on the main image here where it says background, I'm going to hit this button here, which creates a layer mask. And as you can see, everything else has now disappeared. Now we're going to go to file and we're going to go to export, quick export as PNG8. And then we're going to save our image. We're going to go into places and I'm going to go into icons. As you can see, there's our map icons there, which I don't want to save it in there. So I'm actually going to come out of there. I'm going to go new folder. I'm going to create a folder called items. And we're going to double click in there. Now, what I want to do is I want to create these icons with a naming um, formula. So it's going to have the location first. Then it's going to have an underscore. Then it's going to have the name of the item. So this one's going to be uh, sofa. Then we're simply going to put PNG at the end of it. Now, if we were creating this couch for a specific position in the game, for example, if it, we wanted this couch to be different in chapter one, sequence three then obviously we would entitle that one underscore three at the end of that but this is just the default icon for that object so we're going to hit save and it'll whiz through and it will save that so now we've got that we can jump into our game loop so here we are back inside our game code and we've got our classes.rpy file open now we originally created this icon here which doesn't actually have a corresponding value to it, but because we didn't have a screen that called for it, it didn't matter. So what we're actually going to do now is we're going to change these values here. So if you remember, and you can check up on here what each one of these properties means. So the first one is going to be a sofa or a seat. We'll just put a seat, we'll just call it a seat. It's code friendly name. Now we need to make sure that we call this 
correctly. So what I'm actually going to do in this one is it's called a sofa in the file directory. So that's what we're going to put in there. Now we know it's in the garden, so we're going to create there. It is an object, it is active, and when we hover over it, we want to say C, like that. I'm gonna save that there. Okay, so we've got code friendly name location, code friendly location number, that's fine. But what we want to do now is we are going to create a new method inside our class statement, which creates a icon for that image or for that object. So what we need to do is we need to go to define and we're going to call this one uh, icon. And what we're going to do is can I actually make this a property and we're going to add the decorator property there. So we're going to go to define icon open brackets self and we're going to turn that into a method there we go so now what we need to do is we need to access the global i'm going to spell global correctly we're going to access the global chapter variable and also the global sequence variable and we're going to go back to our defaults and defines and check that they are both capitalized chapter sequence boom cool so what we've got here is we need to create some file names so we're going to say uh, output A, I'll give that a capital O so that we know what we're doing. Output A equals, so we're going to say, we also need to access our location like that. Okay, so we're going to say output A equals location plus an underscore plus self dot name like so and we're going to add a dot png at the end of that cool so that's output a that's the simple default one now we're going to copy that and we're going to go to there and we're going to say output b with a capital b equals location plus self dot name plus str chapter i spell that correctly plus underscore plus str sequence like that now you could get really funky here and you could have um you could have a different icon for a specific chapter and not include the sequence in which case you would create a third output which was just the chapter with no sequence attached to it. But for simplicity, we're just going to do this one like that. And that's all we need to do. So now when we call for this variable, we need to say if renpy.loadable output b return output b and if not, we're just going to return output A, like that. Perfect. So that's that. Now all we need to do is we need to create a return value for this, uh, this, this item. So when we click on it, it needs to do something. So in order to achieve that, what we're actually going to do is we're going to copy this property, this whole property. We're going to say Control C, and we're going to go there, and we're going to go Control V. And this time we're going to change this name to clicked like that we still need our chapter we still need our sequence and we still need our location in fact no we don't need our location at all we can get rid of that so we're going to remove that and we're just going to remove that as well okay so what we're now saying is if the icon is clicked on what we need to do is we need to call either a chapter specific output label or we're just going to call the default. So what we're saying is output B equals the item's name, which we're actually going to change to the code friendly name in this instance, which is a capital C like that. 
because we're not out and we're now not accessing a file name we're now accessing a label so we can't have things like spaces in our label names so we're now calling the code friendly name plus the chapter plus the sequence and i've just noticed an error in the code we need to actually do a plus underscore in there like that which means location plus that plus yes so we need to put an underscore in there as well well spotted team there we go so that's now going to work correctly so yeah when we click on this what we're doing is we're going to return this clicked value back into the game loop and what we and what it's going to be consisting of is the code friendly name of the object underscore the chapter number underscore the sequence number and we're going to remove the dot png from the end of it if not what we're going to do is we are just going to return the we're going to create and just to make this a little bit simpler we're going to create output a again so output a capital a there equals self dot code friendly name and we're going to add just we're just going to add some text to the end of it just to make sure that it is a there we go happy days and that's just to show that it's our default clicked so now we can return output a like that so what we now actually need to do is we need to create a label for our item that we've just created which is going to be sofa underscore clicked sofa clicked in fact we're going to just add underscore there like that, just to make sure that that works like so happy days so we need to create a new folder we've got in inside of our data notes there we're actually going to create a new uh, folder in our scripts and we're going to call this one items clicked like so and then inside that we're going to create a new file and we're going to call this one default clicks that's rpy like that and that just means that all of our items when they default click they're all going to go inside this so we know that we need to create a new label and it's going to be called sofa underscore clicked with a capital c like that and then we just put whatever we want to happen in this instance we just want the uh, text to appear so we're just going to put some text in there and it's just going to say this is a sofa nice and easy nice and easy now that's all very well and good we can come back into our classes we can check that this is all cool what i also would like to do is change this so where it says rempy loadable we need to change that to has underscore label and that will check that the label exists and not that a file is loadable so just to recap what we're doing here we are checking we're creating a file name a url here we're saying this one is just the location plus the name of the object and then ending that in png this one is adding the location then the self name then the chapter number and the sequence number png we're checking to see if this file exists if it does then we will return that value if it does not then we will simply return the original default value which is the location plus the name once we've clicked on our icon we need to know what to do next in this case we're going to call a label so we need to know which label to call so what we're doing is we're creating a label which is using the code friendly name and then underscore click we're also creating one which is the code friendly name plus the chapter number and then the sequence number again we are checking if this label exists then we're going to return that value if it doesn't exist then we're going to return this value simple as that now what we can also do as an extra layer of safety is we can actually add more code to this so we can say if rempi dot has underscore label and we're going to say output a in there then we're going to return output a and finally what we're going to do is we're going to return and we're going to input a string and we're just going to say no label like that and then we're going to copy this we're going to save our file now we're going to go into default clicks and before we go anywhere there 
we're going to say label, no label, and in there we're just going to say can't do that right now. So now what we've done is we've created a label which will be called in case we accidentally create the wrong label name inside our game loop or if we do it wrong. It's always going to call this if it can't call anything else. So that's a little bit of error catching happened there. So when we're testing a game, if it comes up and says, I can't do that right now, spelled it correctly, then we will know that we've made a stuff up somewhere, but it's not going to break the game. So we can just write down in our notepad, clicking on such and such doesn't do anything. And then we can keep testing our game rather than having to keep going back through and testing every single thing. So that's all there is to this episode, guys. Thanks very much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below. In the next episode, we're actually going to create the screen where these things are displayed, and we will move on from there. Thanks very much, guys. See you later. Bye-bye.